Today's paper uh, that we're going through is from January 2022. It's the Physics A-Level International Edexcel exam, which is modular, Unit 5 on Thermodynamics, Radiation, Oscillations and Cosmology. These units are normally examined in the second half of the year for Year 13 students doing their A-Level. Okay, so this is to help students prepare for their um, uh, module exam, which is normally in June. And um, the later papers, 23, 24, I will do later, closer to the exam date, as many teachers use the later exams for um, practice mock exams. Okay, so the first section starts with multiple choice, section A, question one says a mass oscillates with simple harmonic motion about a fixed point O. So it's about simple harmonic motion. Which of the following statements is correct about the, ma the motion of the mass? Well, its velocity is always towards O. Well, that's not true because sometimes it has to move away from O to oscillate to and fro. B is the answer. Its acceleration is always towards O because if you pull it, uh, the displacement is to the right, so the displacement is positive, the acceleration will be negative towards the centre. If you displace it to the left, the acceleration will then be, say, if the acceleration, if the displacement to the neg to the left is counted as negative, the acceleration will be positive. So the acceleration is always towards the centre of the oscillation, because if you displace it, there's a restoring force which tries to put it back to equilibrium. C, just to go through, its acceleration is directly proportional to its velocity. No, as we can see from this equation, the acceleration is directly proportional to displacement, which is x. And D says its acceleration and velocity are always in opposite directions. No, if they change the word velocity for displacement, which is x, that would be true. So C and D are not correct. Okay, moving on to question two. It's about latent heat. So it's from the thermodynamics section of the syllabus. In an experiment to determine the specific latent heat of vaporization of water, LV is the code they're using for it, the symbol. A student used an electric heater or electrical heater to boil water in a beaker. Okay, so at boiling point, all energy supplied will go to vaporizing, breaking bonds. Uh, from liquid state to vaporize it. The experiment data gave a value that they calculated to be 2.20 megajoules per kilogram, whereas the textbook value for the, val for the latent heat of vaporization is higher than that. It's 2.26 megajoules per kilogram. Which of the following could be an explanation for this difference? Okay, that's what they want to do. Some energy is transferred to the surroundings. Well, if some energy is lost, then the calculated value, the energy you input, will be greater. So the value you calculate would be higher in this case. So A is incorrect. B is the correct answer. It says the heat, the heat of power was underestimated. So if the power is underestimated, it will give you the correct error. Okay, the error that you're looking for. It will give you a latent heat of vaporization, which is too low. The student did not stir the water. Well, that's irrelevant because if it's boiling, the water is already being stirred by the action of boiling. It's stirring is to make sure that the water is mixed well and it's already boiling, so that's not uh, pertinent. It's not relevant. The, the heater is inefficient. If the heater was inefficient, it would not, it would overestimate the power, so it will increase the value for latent heat of vaporization because remember, the energy going in is due to the power, is proportional to the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so if it's overestimated, the directly proportional LV will be too high. So that means the power must be underestimated. Okay, that's the first two questions done. Question three is then um, a pendulum. So in Paris, a pendulum uh, that takes 8.2 seconds to swing from one extreme, say here, to the other, there, is, takes 8.25 seconds. 
that means there must be a very big pendulum. Uh, so it goes 8.25 seconds there and 8.25 seconds back. So the period would be twice 8.25 seconds because remember period is to go uh, one way and then return to the original starting point. Which of the following expressions gives the length of the pendulum? Well, it's algebra. The equation given to you on the equation sheet is t equals 2 pi root L over G. So if you change that square out so you can get L away from the bracket, the square root sign, t squared is 4 pi squared L over G, make L the subject of the equation, uh, then it will be t squared G over 4 pi squared. So you're looking for something with 4 pi squared at the bottom, so it has to be C or D. t squared, well t squared is not 8.25, so they want you to think that the period is 8.25, so it could be many students make this error, and you've got to realize that the period, as I've put in the top of the question, is 2 times 8.25 seconds, 8.25 to go one way, 8.25 to go the other way, which would be 16.5 for the period, 4 pi squared in the bottom, and g is common to both. So the answer is d, Okay, if you put the values in. Remember the multiple choice questions, the reason people get them wrong is they'll fall for the tricks and it's very easy to think that the period is 8.25 seconds if you do not read the questions very carefully, which is why I always recommend to my students, underline things as you're reading them to make sure you've taken in the information. And as I read them, I put any values I think of already into uh, my thinking because it means I'm thinking critically rather than being passive. Okay. Question four is about tritium, which is a radioactive isotope. It's basically a, a isotope of hydrogen and wine may contain traces of tritium, it says. Okay, so that's the information they're giving us. Doesn't really matter, but you've got to accept that. So one 25 year old bottle of wine was found to have an unusually high activity of 22 becquerels. Okay, so um, the half-life of tritium is 12.5 years, they tell us, okay? So the next bit you have to work out is that um, the, the time of the, the age of the bottle is two, twice the half-life of tritium. Okay, which of the following gives the activity um, of this wine when it was bottled? That means the original activity, which I put down as activity at time zero, okay? So, two half-lives ago means that after two half-lives, 25 years later, the activity will be a quarter of the initial value, okay? That means the initial activity will be four times the activity measured um, where, when it was 25 years old. So it'll be uh, oh, four times 20, 22. I made a mistake there, okay? So it's four times 22, so it'll be 88 becquerels initially, okay? Question five is the next bit that you need to do. So question five is looking at a fixed mass of an ideal gas, which has a volume V and exerts a pressure P. The absolute temperature, so that means in Kelvin, of the gas is T. When the gas is heated, the new pressure is 4P. Okay, so if you do, so that means you know that P1 V1 over T1 is a constant. So um, that's what you've got to work out. Um, and if you do that, you will be able to see that P1, P2, V2 over T2, the final value, will be equal to P1, V1 over T1. Okay, because P, V over T is a constant. If you do that, put the numbers in, you'll be able to follow my algebra. You'll see the only one that fits is A5. Okay, question six. Um, is about the current theory suggests that the universe is expanding. Yeah, which of the following is evidence to support this theory? Okay, so first of all, um, question six, which of the following is evidence to support this theory? All galaxies appear to be rotating. That's not relevant because um, the expanding universe is about the expansion of the universe. That's not about rotation. Dark matter has been detected in the universe. It's not been detected. Yeah, it's just a theory. 
that they've come up with so far as a way of um, explaining why there's not enough matter uh, according to the calculations. So all distant stars are observed to be increasing in size. That's untrue. All distant stars are observed to be moving away, which was is Hubble's law. As you look further away, the distance, the velocity of recession is greater. So it's a straight line variation. So the further a galaxy is from the Earth, the faster it recedes. D is the correct answer. Okay. Question seven. A student investigates the absorption of gamma radiation by lead. She determines the background radiation count rate, yeah, before she starts the investigation. Okay, now here they're talking about count rate, yeah. So you have to you know that's per second or whatever. It has to be a rate, that means divided by time, per, per unit time. Which of the following would not affect her value for the background count rate, okay? So the the place where she made the experiments, this would affect it because uh, the background count varies according to where you're living. For example, if you measure the background count rate in Cornwall in the UK, where they have a lot of radioactive rocks, then the background count rate will be higher. So the place does affect the background count rate. The temperature of the surrounding does not affect the background count rate. So it's independent of temperature. So B is the correct answer. Let's just go through them. The time interval for the background count well, count, the, the, if you increase the, uh, the time interval, the, the background count will increase. So this is not true. However, here they're talking about um, count rate. So if you do it for a greater time interval, you might get a more accurate count rate. But over here, they haven't put count rate. Yeah, they put count. So I think there's some confusion with this question that they are using count rate here and background count there. Obviously, if you increase the time, the background count will change. So this part, I think, question C is confusing. But anyway, B is definitely the answer. Temperature does not affect radioactivity. And D says a type of radiation detector she used yeah, uh, would not affect her value of the background counter. Some detectors are more sensitive than others, so it would affect what she measures. Okay. So the detector does matter because you can have different detectors. For example, some detectors aren't very good at uh, measuring gamma radiation because it passes straight through them. So the answer is B. So some answers, there's some thinking to be done when you're doing these multiple choice questions. And the, the, more, the better you know the concepts, the more likely you are to get the answers correct. Okay. Uh, question 8 is about Sirius and Alpha Centauri. Two of our closest stars, Sirius has a luminosity 16 times greater than Alpha Centauri's. So I put luminosity of uh, Sirius is 16 times the luminosity of Alpha Centauri. Sirius is twice as far away. So I put Sirius, distance of Sirius equals twice the distance of Alpha. The intensity of light um, from Sirius and the intensity of light... Um, from Alpha Centauri uh, the, is given as IS and I Alpha. Okay, so they're just telling you to use these terms. So, you, of course, the intensity is the luminosity divided by 4 pi d squared. That's in your equation sheet at the back. Which of the following will give you the ratio of IS to I Alpha? Well, IS is therefore going to be, if we put it all in terms of uh, these ratios, IS is 16 times the luminosity of Alpha of um, Alpha Centauri and so you can put it 16 luminosity of Alpha so I'm going to change it all to the uh, value so we only have the same uh, luminosity on, on for both equations so then we can divide one by the other 4 pi's in both equations for, um, for the um, um, Sirius star it's going to be divided by 2 times the distance of Alpha Centauri. So when you do that, you will be able to put all the algebra in, then you divide the two values. So for Alpha, you just put the normal values in, whereas this one is 16 times this, and this one is two times this. So once you do that, you divide them, you will get the correct answer, which will see 16 divided by four is four, four over one means that the answer is four. Okay, question nine. The spectrum of electromagnetic radiation from a galaxy is observed to have re a redshift. 
which of the following is a correct statement about lines in this spectrum, okay? All the lines are in the red part, that's incorrect. All the lines are observed to have, and that's the key word, observed to have longer wavelengths than expected. Yes, that is true for redshift. Lines with, with wavelengths at the red end of the spectrum are the most intense. No, that's not uh, relevant. Light from all lines was emitted with longer wavelengths. No, they're emitted with the normal wavelengths, yes, but then they're observed by the observer, not emitted, to be longer than they are emitted. So the answer is B. And then question 10, the last of the multiple choice, the graph shows how the binding energy per nucleon depends on the nucleon number. This is a common graph you need to know. So the bi it's a way of saying which is the most stable element, and iron is at the peak, uh, element number 56, uh, nucleon number 56, not uh, um, element number. Which of the following can be deduced from the graph? Um, the answer is D. Low mass nuclei release energy during fusion. Well, we know that because you've got low mass is here. So they be, they're going up the curves. They're producing something more stable. So these release energy during fusion. It's like the equivalent in chemistry of, of exothermic reactions. But of course, this is a nuclear reaction, not a chemical reaction. So A, uh, iron readily undergoes fission? No, because it's already very stable. So it's not going to readily undergo any change at all. Okay, the higher you are on the curve, the more stable you are, so the less likely you are to change. Fission releases less energy than fusion. That's not true. Fission um, releases a larger amount of um, energy than fusion, but per nucleon, fusion is more efficient. Okay, and high mass nuclei cannot undergo fusion. No, it is. It's unlikely. High mass. Nuclei don't want to get bigger. It's unlikely, but it is possible with sufficient energy. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been formed in the first place. So that's the end of the multiple choice section. I'm going to have to take a pause because you may have noticed that someone is trying to contact me. The bell was ringing. Anyway, if you found this useful, I will go through the section B later on. Okay. Um, section B will be uh, possibly done in two sections because if we've done already the multiple choice, Section B takes longer to go through. Anyway, if you found this useful, please like it and share it with your friends. And if you want to be notified when my next video will be ready, please subscribe. Otherwise, you will not know when the second section is ready. Also, we're trying to increase our um, share of people watching our videos. So it would be really helpful if you subscribe and you help us to uh, reach more students. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see you soon. Bye.